Hey there, welcome to this video where we're going to be taking a look at using mushroom substrate as spawn. So one question we get asked quite regularly is, can I use substrate as spawn? And obviously the reason people ask this is because uh, using grain spawn, which is what we usually recommend as spawn, and that's what most commercial mushroom farms would use, to inoculate their substrate. Using grain spawn is expensive, it's one of the highest uh, production costs that you'll face when you're growing mushrooms. And so, you know, this is what people are normally using, but it's fairly expensive. And also, when you look elsewhere, when you look at things like uh, sourdough, um, yogurt, it's often possible to reuse a culture over and over again and always sort of expand it and use it for the next batch that you're making. So, people naturally one day, you know, can I do that with mushrooms? Can I use the substrate from one batch, break it up and use that as spawn for the next batch? So that's what we're going to be exploring today. So we're actually going to do an experiment in a minute and we're going to do this ourselves and follow it over the following weeks and we'll come back and share this result with you. But before we get into that experiment, I just want to explain to you why it is that um, usually this is not recommended as a way to inoculate a substrate. And it comes down to something called senescence. Now you can think of senescence almost like the aging process. Over time, through the continual process of cell division that goes on in the mycelium, it begins to lose its vigor. You get uh, harmful mutations that occur in the cells. And what you end up with is mycelium that is less strong in its growth. You tend to get more incidences of contamination where competing organisms outcompete the mycelium. And even when you do get to full colonization, you find that you get lower yields because you don't have the same nutrient input that you do when you use grain spawn. And in addition to that, you have to take into account the fact that when you're reusing substrate as spawn, you're not introducing a pure culture into your substrate like you are with grain spawn. So grain spawn is really a pure culture. It's grown on sterilized grain and there's really a complete absence of other competing organisms that you're introducing into your substrate. However, when you use spent substrate, you're going to have to accept the fact that there are going to be competing organisms in that substrate that you're introducing into the next batch. So this will happen over the course of its incubation and fruiting period, particularly if you're working with pasteurized substrates instead of sterilized substrate. But during that process of sitting in an incubation room for a couple of weeks and in a fruiting room for a couple of weeks, the surface of the substrate is going to come into contact with other competing organisms, whether it's uh, mold spores, whether it's bacteria. Um, they're going to be present on the substrate. So when you then break off a piece of that, place it into your new batch of freshly pasteurized substrate, not only are you introducing your mushroom spawn in the form of the substrate, um, but you're also introducing some of these competing organisms and therefore opening the door to them um, growing on your new substrate. Now having said that, it is possible to use substrate as spawn. Many years ago when I first started growing mushrooms, just out of interest, I did the experiment that we're going to do today and I found that it worked fine. You know, I used some substrate from a bag where I'd already grown a crop of mushrooms from. I broke it up, crumbled it up and used it to inoculate another batch. So it does work and there are many other people out there you'll find on the internet that say you can do this. What I want to test today though is where's the limit to that? You know, how many times can you reuse it? And also how reliable is it? You know, if you're gonna make um, a batch of 10 bags in this way, are they all gonna work like that? Is just a few of them gonna work? So that's what we're gonna to do today. We're gonna to break up some substrate from a bag that's already produced two crops of mushrooms and we're gonna introduce that as the spawn to another 10 bags. And then we're gonna track that over the next few weeks and we're going to record things like, you know, what's the success rate uh, to get to full colonization. And we're going to record the yields that we receive as well. And then we'll compare that to a bag, uh, the bags that we normally make that are inoculated with the grain spawn and see how the two compare. Now, there is, of course, a third option, which we're also going to do today, which is sort of almost between the two. Um, and that is to use a bit of substrate that has... Um, reached full colonization but it hasn't fruited any mushrooms yet so this is in a way kind of at a younger stage so i've got here one bag that's just two weeks old it's just finished in the incubation chamber it's fully incubated uh, but it hasn't fruited any mushrooms yet it's still um, in the process of growing quite quickly as it does during incubation 
And so my hypothesis is that it's going to work out much better to use uh, this substrate as spawn than it is to use this substrate, which um, is another two weeks older, three weeks older, sorry, and has already been in the fruiting room. It's put a lot of energy into producing crops and mushrooms. And just looking at the bag, you know, I can see that the mycelium in this bag has aged more than the mycelium in this bag. Um, so we'll do these two things alongside each other. We're going to compare uh, using spent substrate from a bag that's already produced a couple crops of mushrooms. We're going to compare that to using substrate that is just two weeks old and has only finished colonizing. And we'll compare that to a uh, substrate that's been inoculated with grain spawn. So I'm going to get on now and do this experiment. I'm going to show you just roughly how we go about doing it. And then we'll come back in a few weeks once we've uh, been able to track the results of this and share them with you. Let's get started. All right, so I've done the first couple bags here, and um, what we've done in the end actually is do a 20% spawn rate. So we've broken up each of the old columns into chunks of uh, roughly uh, five chunks from each column, and we'll be adding it to five bags for each of them. So we'll make five from each batch, whether it's the older columns that have been in the fruit and we've already received a couple crops from, or whether it's the newer columns that um, have just finished incubating. We're going to make five of each and we'll come back and compare this in a few weeks time once they've gone through the process of colonization and fruiting and we can compare the results. So it's quite a small trial. We've only got five bags of each, but it'll be enough for us to get an idea of how far you can push this. And um, what I'm hoping is that both of these bags grow fine and that we can go on to the next generation with this as well and use these bags as spawn for the next batch and keep going with that basically over the months ahead and we'll see how far we can push it. All right, that's it for today's video. Thanks a lot for joining us. And if you want to keep up with this experiment and other future videos, please do subscribe to the channel and we'll see you next time. Bye.